Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. Today we're taking a second look at Junsei Obe versus uh, Georgi Popa from Russia, the 2019 World Championships. Um, I really like this match because one, I really like Junsei Obe. He's very small for his division. And generally everyone says if you're smaller in Taekwondo, you're going to lose a fight. This guy point gapped, I think, every single one of his matches being one of the smaller fighters. So it was phenomenal um the overall points i'm gonna try and go over today are one is to create the best opportunity for yourself you can't really see it right here but the height difference between these two is enormous um take a look right here when they're facing off blue is korea he eventually wins this match red right here is russia a lot of people would look at this high difference and say russia's gonna take it what is the bane the only time I want you guys to think about this. The only time the shorter person could score is on the inside, right? So all what Jinsei Obey does during this whole match is he puts himself in the clinch where he has the highest opportunity to score versus Russia. A lot of people say, you know, maybe he can go on the outside. But knowing he can maximize only his scoring opportunity on the inside led Jinsei Obey to really develop his game on the inside. And it becomes a... It's almost like a barrage of different things and different manipulations going on. We're not going to get into all of those. It's just a general overarching principle that he creates the best opportunity for himself um, here on the clinch. And so you can a great, great example of that is right here in the opening part. Three, twenty-seven. Oh, sorry. Three forty. 340, You can see his manipulations. He's figured out from sparring so many people. He gets on the inside, and most people will opt for the inside for the inside um, lever. So someone's arms can be on the outside, other person's arms can be on the inside. Jun Seo tries to tries to get the outside. Most people want the inside because there's a little bit more leverage from manipulation. Jun Seo wants the outside because he can. If your arm is if his arm is on the outside of his opponent's arm, he can capitalize and control where the arm goes and where it's blocking. So. Notice it's on the outside here and on the other side. I believe it's on the outside and the other side. Head kick. And then here too, notice his grip is on the outside here. And he uses that to make sure that Red has to pull his either his hand out and around to get low or has to kind of slither him like this to try and block this uh, open flank. Here. And he's able to score another point there. So on the inside, knowing where you can be strong is... Very, very important. Knowing where you score the most points. And that it's going to come with experience. It's going to come with time. Where do I Review your own matches. Where do I score the most points against the most number of people? That's generally where you're strongest. So set up your game plan to where you can score the most points. Step number one. I mean, that seems obvious, but you're not going to know that until you do some film review. It's not. Gonna, you're also not going to know unless you actually get tournaments under your belt and see where am I actually scoring. Um, so... When you review your own fights, think about that. Take tally. Do I score from distance? Do I score from inside? Do I score defensively? Do I score more offensively? Take all those into consideration and try and figure out what situation you score the most in. Um, the second thing I want to cover in this, we're moving kind of fast. Second thing I want to cover is think about techniques that solve multiple problems. Um, so Jun Seo has um, a situation where he's not very tall. So from distance, he can not score. He can only be scored on. So he has to not get scored on and get his way onto the inside. And he has to close the distance. He has to close the... the di Where is a good example of distance here? He has to close this distance without getting hit. So Jun Seo's base kick, base movement for his whole this whole match. You're going to see this repeated over and over and over again. Um, he shows here at 327. It's here. Not that one. Sorry about that. My timestamp is off. Try 7.15. I think that's where it was. This. Um, this hit. So he still gets... So he, notice he, it's not like he doesn't ever get hit. He still gets hit. But this movement here aggressively closes this distance. And so if Russia doesn't hit him on the go here... Then he has to slide. He has to slide back and try to hit him, which he tried to do here. But initially, the worst situation for Jin Seo is to always be at this distance. So in order for Russia to score, he has to slide back and maintain distance. In which case, he's only going to be able to fire one kick, one or two kicks before Jin Seo can get on the inside and then maximize his game.
So this movement of two, three, four, two, three slides forward. Those two slides forward closes the distance, and because his knee is up, solves, uh, or at least almost completely solves the problem of him getting hit initially. And it reduces the amount of time that the opponent can counter. All they have is that one kick. And to make it even more deadly, it's not something that you can just ignore and slide back and move out of the way from because there's a kick at the end of it. So it's solving him coming in. It's solving the issue of where he, he's not in a position to score. It solves him closing the distance. And it still creates an opportunity for him to score. And so at the worst, the worst scenario is going to happen is Russia can counter. That's one kick. But when, once Jun Seo's in distance, because if you counter, you have to be in place, unless you're throwing a heavy, heavy pie jogging, which you're probably going to miss or uh, be off balance after. Um, it solves, so Russia can only get one kick, and at the end of it, he still gets one kick, and then he's in his maximum distance. So the kick, the chance to score for Russia is greatly minimized by just doing this. And he's in distance. So after this, I believe... Which is super close again. Jensen closes the distance right to where he's uh, primed and working to score the most points. Uh, and it's solved just by those those two hops, two, three hops forward into a kick. And he does that repeatedly. I think there is another one. See this A813. Same thing. There's a break. So if you don't, if even if you were to slide in initially, that's still Junseo's game. If you slide back and counter, he's going to get his uh, one kickoff. You're going to get your kickoff, and then you're back into Junseo's game. And so Junseo does a great job of flipping what people would consider his disadvantage into his advantage by constantly pressing his opponent and constantly closing in this whole this whole match. Um, so wonderful job by him. And I want you guys to think about. It's, it's done by just foot, essentially just footwork. Like, use your footwork and the ring to create situations where you can score the most points for yourself. Um, the last thing I would say is... The last thing that makes Jin Seo so deadly is that he adapts... So, let me put it this way. He adapts to his opponent's ad adaptation. Um, I go over this kind of in my progression video where I think I want you guys to think about your main scoring weapon think about what counters that scoring weapon, and then think about what counters that counter. So how do you counter someone who's constantly closing the distance on you? What's the answer to that? The answer is you kick short. Because if they're closing the distance on you and you kick short, i.e. in front of them, they're going to run into your kick. That can be body kick. That can be face kick. Um, that's that's the counter. You just, you just kick short, and then they can't do that, and then you've kind of reestablished the ground. What Jun Seo does, he says, okay, if that's the counter to that... My counter to that is to just be out of distance and to counter that counter with face kicks, and you can hop right in. And he does this throughout the match, and he interweaves it because it's become so natural for him. It's it, the game plan. The game plan essentially is very simple, but he's so effective at delivering it. So I want you to look here at uh, 1530. This is it, right? Oh. Is that too? Oh wait, no, that's just the base kick. Okay, so this is one of the examples. I thought I had a different timestamp. Right here. So here, kick short because Russia. By this is the third round already. So Russia's been shoved to the edge of the match. He's 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 getting worked. Look at the score. He's um he's been sh he's been constantly pressured. So the answer to that is to kick short. Un like consciously or unconsciously, he's making the call to kick short. And uh, he capitalizes right after. Almost goes, gets a head kick there. Uh, let me see if I can find the one where he does. Oh no, it's a little bit earlier. Yay! It's, where is that? Forty-two. He does it beautifully in one of these sequences. A little more. Okay. Okay. Here. So what I was saying is. Jun Seo's constant game is to go in. The answer to someone constantly coming in at you is to throw kicks uh, short, head kicks, or there's a third option, which is spin. Well, I don't see tall guys spinning that often. Um, a jump back kick does does wonders for that. But ideally, the, the quickest solution is to kick short because they're going to run into your kick. So the answer to that is to get them to kick short and then focus and capitalize on their mistake. So after this clinch... 
I want you to watch Junseo's answer. Boom. And it's a forward X kick, which hits him, scores again. So, uh, main things from Junseo, I want you guys to take away for your own game plan. Like, don't you don't have to take his full game plan. You can build your own game plan. But the overall principles are that he's maximizing the time he can score. If you watch this match or any of the other matches, they're all, I would say, 80% of the matches fought in the clinch. He fights very rarely from the outside because he's smaller, so why would you let someone else have more time to score in a better position, to be in a better position to score than you? Um, that doesn't make sense. So he fights a lot on the inside. Majority of these matches are... He's in the clinch the whole time. And yeah, like it's draining on stamina, but that's the game plan and that's what's effective. So think about that. Number two, he has techniques that solve multiple problems. Like besides the, the knee up and um, slide, slide and kick, he also has that with, mixed up with a punch. So if you close the distance, he's ready for that. He's also willing to exchange and extend that leg if you stand in place for a cut. So that without motion of bringing the knee up and hopping forward that you can fire off from any distance and it solves multiple problems. It gets him on the inside. It covers the distance between, between him and the opponent very, very quickly. And, um, it allows him opportunities to score where it's a one, one exchange versus if you're on the outside playing defensively, it's, uh, I'm going to, you can essentially only block and they're kicking at you with flip kicks. So they have multiple opportunities to score. So it skews, it changes, uh, that just that simple forward puts the, Scoring opportunities back in Jinseo's uh, on Jinseo's side, and then lastly, think about your main weapons and what are the adaptations to your weapons, and then what are your adaptations to those weapons. So in this case, he likes to close the distance. The answer is to kick short, so he can't do that. So what's your answer to count someone kicking short? Uh, this is a great one right here. This hopping axe kick. Boom. Perfect. Great, great answer. And will that hit every time? No. But after he hits, look where he is again. He's on the inside where he can score the most. So there are other people who, uh, for example, were to take Dehun. Dehun scores a lot of points. Um, one, in the clinch. Uh, two, he scores kind of from distance. He, he's good at scoring in general all over the place. But one of the other areas that's kind of overlooked for Dehun where he scores is defensively. And so a lot of his game is focused on pressing, pressing, f pressing. So that way when you attack Dehun, he has option to either counter you in place counting you on one slide back, counting you on two slide backs, or to disengage completely. Like, so when you're attacking him, you have a one in three chance, and all he has to do is wait for you to, to finish kicking. Um, so he puts himself continuously in good, opportune places to score. Uh, so this is stuff for you guys to take home, uh, more so principle-wise, but if you guys want some great clinch techniques, watch Jun Seo specifically in the way he's manipulating the arms and the way he's manipulating his footwork and his hips in the clinch to create opportunities to score both left and right side. Um, he's phenomenal on the inside, guys, and a lot of people have been asking me for that. Uh, but that's it, guys, and so uh, see you guys next time.